Oh yeah, she, uh, cure cancer. Cure cancer? Why? Is it because? Yeah. <laughs> Many people suffer. All right, Eddie, what are the lessons? He wants a car. He wants a car. He doesn't say why, he just wants a car. Franco, si Dios te diera lo que quisieras ahorita, ¿qué sería? Un torpe cubano. ¿Y por qué? Un torpe cubano. ¿Y por qué? ¿Qué sería? ¿Y por qué? ¿Qué pidieras? So most of us chose material things, things that in the world that we can get. And money gets us, for example, cars, money, clothes, a job. But that's not always the answer. There's so many things you can choose from. It doesn't have to be something that you can see or something in you. So this is the title of today. Do you need this? You really need this. Let me know. 
down when you're there. First book of Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 1 and above. Bella, primera de crónicas. Uno. So a 12-year-old boy was chosen to be the next king of Israel. 
uh, he was the third king. First one was Saul, second King David, and third King Solomon. So we start thinking, it comes to mind, at least to me when I was reading this, there was a question. It said, why would God choose a kid to become the next king? Like, who remembers when they were 12 or going to be 12? Like, it was a bad life. I mean, it wasn't bad. It, w it was weird. It was a weird phase in our lives. That's before we were teenagers. We're 12 and then 13. So, that phase of growing into a teen. At 12 years old, we're still learning. We have a lot to learn. Uh, start learning about life. Start seeing how hard it is to live in the world. How many problems there are in the world. How fair it's not. How fair our government is not. Like really, everything you start, you start learning, your mind starts absorbing. Uh, at 12 years old, you get to have your first little crush. You get to like the first little boy, first little girl. Uh, you start making hobbies. You figure out like, hey, I like, you know, I really like soccer, or I really like baseball, basketball, uh, anime, you like cars, you like, you figure out your hobby, you find out who you are at that age. You start learning. You know, we're also immature. At 12 years old, we're very immature. We take every joke too far, honestly. Middle school boys, the boys' locker room, amazing. Girls, I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah, and then at 12 years old, the age of rebellion. We start disobeying. We start responding to our parents, being rude, uh, fighting with the teachers, giving teachers a hard time at 12 years old. We tend to disobey and just give our parents a hard time. We're lazy. We don't want to clean. We don't want to do anything. We just want to stay up all night, be with our friends, or do something all night. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> yeah, so at 12 years old, our life, we're little kids. We don't know what we want. We're not ready for what God has for us, outside of God at least. So as we read, Solomon chose wisdom. What's wisdom? Can anyone define it? Definition of wisdom, Geo. Being smart. That's part of it. Okay, so it can be intelligence, which means to be smart. What else is wisdom? Anybody? Knowledge. Knowledge. Alexis, what else does wisdom mean? What can it stand for? Reasonable. Reasoning? It's a big word for the little kids. Eric, do you know what it is? What's reasonable? You have reason. What's intelligent? You're smart. What's knowledge? You know things. What's understanding? You understand everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, these are all part of the wisdom. But, here's the actual definition. Wisdom is defined as the quality of having experience. So it's also experience. That means you've been through this, you know what to do. Uh, knowledge. And judgment, good judgment. Eric. Experience, we think, intelligent knowledge, E-R-I-C. Good judgment as well. What does that mean? What's a good judgment? Okay, it's it's also yeah, it's part of making a good choice, making a good decision. And then knowing how to take a good action. You know, you're in a situation, you're caught up, you have to know what to do. Like you think through it, that's part of wisdom. Now, an example. We all have a room, right? I hope. Well, we've all had a room. There you go. So, your mom is coming to your room. It's a scenario. Picture this. Your mom is coming to your room, 
She's not home. Your room's a mess. And you know your mom paints a mess unless you're messy. Your mom paints a mess and she gets mad when she sees a mess. So you clean. Before she walks in, the room is perfectly clean, everything's organized. She's happy. Now, with everything I just told you, just think about it. Why is that wise? Why was it wise for you to clean the room? Raise your hand. Bella? You won't get in trouble? Anyone else? Gio? So she won't get mad? Exactly. Anyone else? Why is it wise to clean your room? To not lose privilege. To not lose privilege? Bella? To not be grounded. So, all your answers, what does that mean? It's for your own benefit. For your own benefit, you have the knowledge. Everything works in your favor. Everything works for you, not against you. So, to save ourselves from the trouble, we clean our room and for our own good, for our own benefit, for our own health, for Christ's sake. You don't want to be in your own dirty room and eat all the bacteria in the world. So, God, Eddie, yeah. God needs us to be wise, to make good decisions. He gives Solomon. Solomon asked for wisdom. What did God give him? Wisdom, wealth, riches, power, influence. God gave him everything when he only asked for one thing. So God didn't expect, just like anyone, you ask a little kid what he wants, you're going to be surprised. He's not going to ask for wisdom. He's going to ask for anything, toys. Toys, iPad, food, uh, snack, uh, ice cream, uh, everything. But the last thing you expect is wisdom. It's like Kayla, just like Gio, they, asked, they said wisdom. So, now, question. How? How can I become wise? How do you become wise? What do you have to do to be wise? Anyone? Anyone? How do you be wise, Eric? Study. Study? Mm. Okay, so, let's turn to the Bible for that answer. Book of James. Span Santiago in Spanish, <laughs> chapter 3, verse 13 through 18. <laughs> Book of Santiago, chapter 3, Book of James, chapter 3, verse 13 through 18. Let me get an amen when you're there.
Don't divide people. Don't fight with anyone. Yeah. Be peaceful. Be yeah. loving. Does it make sense so far? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Number five. Be merciful. Have mercy. Does anyone have mercy? Yeah. Fellas, you have mercy? Can you give us an example of mercy? Spare the pants. <laughs> <laughs> Should you have done that? <laughs> yeah, technically she's right. Uh, be mercy means forgiving. Be kind, forgive those who hurt you. Those who hurt your feelings, forgive them. Those who got you mad, forgive them. Those who have hurt you in the past, forgive them. It doesn't mean like you hate them, but forgive them and move on. If you don't want them a part of your life, don't worry. Just keep forgiving. Keep moving forward. As meet the Robin. Keep moving forward. Any questions? Verse 1 to 4. 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 Verse 1 to 4.
Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. Are you guys ready? Yes. Yes? Yes? Yes. Ready, Caleb? <laughs> okay. Now, look at Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. Uh, Eddie, can you read for us? Sure. Thank you. Um, my son forgot, forget, not my lock. <laughs> Dad! Let it, oh my, mine's more like, um, Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here, here. Listen, I think my more <laughs> Shakespeare. Listen, I forgot. Dad. <laughs> my son did not forget my teaching. Forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and yeah, prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never <laughs> leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Thank you. Let me read it one more time. My version. <clears throat> my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. So why do we need wisdom? What does this tell us? It gives you long life, long lasting life. It gives you peace, prosperity, which means everything. You're stable. You're stable. Prosperity means life is good to you. Blessings upon blessings. Carlos? Being wise also brings favor. So everything works in your favor. You wanna go like, you wanna go and get a job, job is yours. You wanna go and get a car, car is yours. Everything works in your favor. So you wanted a raise, you, you work for it, God gives it to you. So everything's in your favor. And finally, success. Success comes when you're wise. So funny, bro. Bella? make a scenario. This is actually in the Bible. It's in, where is it? First Kings. There you go. Now, this one was First Kings. Primera de Reyes. Given birth, that this woman also gave birth, 
and we were together. No one was witness in the house except the two of us in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she laid on top of him. So she rose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your maidservant slept and laid him in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. Which means breast. And when I rose in the morning to nurse my son, there he was, dead. But when I had examined him in the morning, indeed, he was not my son, whom I had born. Then the other woman said, No, but the living one is my son, and the dead one is your son. And the first woman said, No, but the dead one is your son, and the living one is my son. Thus they spoke before the king. So the king is King Solomon, remember? He asked for wisdom. And the king said, The one says, This is my son who lives, and your son is the dead one. And the other says, No, but your son is the dead one, and my son is the living one. Then the king said, Bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, Divide the living child in two. Cut the child in two. And give half to one and half to the other. Then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king, for she yearned with compassion for her son. And she said, O oh my lord, give her the living child, and by no means kill him. But the other said, Let him be neither mine nor yours, but divide him, cut him in half. So the king answered and said, Give the first woman the living child, and by no means kill him. She is his mother. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had rendered, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. So what, what do you guys take out of this? Like, what was wise? Who made the action points? He tested them. He burned the baby. Yeah. The baby? He said, which mother will care for? Huh? Exactly. So, by cutting the child in two, it would expose who was the real mother. The real mother would give, rather give her son away than. He would rather give the son away than have him dead. So, Solomon knew. Solomon's wisdom exposed. Said, hey, the real mother's gonna give out and rather let her son live than have him cut in half. And the other woman, since it wasn't her son, she didn't care. They cut him in half. No so one can have it. So that was Solomon's wisdom. It just demonstrated Solomon's wisdom. Oh, they're here now. We can restart. No. Okay. Hi, Sierra. No. I'm gonna have to
But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality and without hypocrisy. So, we saw here that James says there's two types of wisdom. Yes, Bella? Go ahead. There's two wisdoms. One that comes from above, and one that is earthly, demonic, sensual. Does that make sense, Carlos? So we can we can be wise in the streets, wise in the world, but then we don't have God's wisdom. There's a difference. Like for example, us older folks, there's the street wise type, where you have common sense, you know not to do this in that area. Just common sense, like for example, if you're in the hood, <laughs> certain things you shouldn't do, just so you won't die, you won't get shot down. That's common sense. That's wisdom from the world. But then the godly wisdom is the wisdom that makes you grow, makes God work in your favor. They're the one that makes godly decisions, because we have the power to decide. Right? Right, Danny? <sighs> yes. you, you get to make your own decisions. That's God, what he let us do. He gave us a freedom. Show us the life you want to live. If you live with God, great. If you don't live with God, good for you, but there's not a good ending for you. So the lack of wisdom makes decisions. The lack of wisdom makes decisions that result in trying or even bad consequences, bad circumstances. If you're not wise, you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble. You're going to regret doing certain things in life. You're not going to grow. You're going to regret that your whole life.
Just anxiety, management test, but what's the result? A good grade, passing grade, you can graduate, you can walk, you can do everything. Yes, you can walk. So, being wise means to think about it. Don't just don't just take action. Think about it first. Does that make sense? Yes. Chief. Any questions? No. No. Peter. Yes. Yes. Kilo. Our parents have always told you think what you think before you how does it go? Think before you speak. There you go. Thank you. So if you speak out of your mind on the tip of your tongue, there's a word that wants to come out, don't do it. It's not always good, not always bad, but just don't do it. Think about it. Being wise means pausing, like, hold up, I'm in a situation, I don't know what to do. Right? Yes. I don't know what to do. What do I do? That's when wisdom kicks in. <laughs> Stop, think about it, and take action. For example, uh, you see that your little brother, little sister, they're fighting, they're giving you a hard time. You're holding back, but they're pushing you to your limit. So what's the immediate action? What's the action you normally take? Fight. Fight back. But then what happens? You get in trouble, they take away your phone, they take away your video games, you turn on the Wi-Fi, they do everything. So you lose all your freedom. Well, Eddie, you're not normal like others. So, you lose your freedom. You lose your freedom. Because of one bad decision you made. But when you think about it, like, okay, I'm gonna let him talk his mind out. He's gonna get mad, he's gonna get more mad than I didn't fight back. She's gonna get more mad that I didn't fight back, that I stayed quiet, you know? Says so that they'd rather be, I'd rather be, there. Oh, it go? It's better to have one crazy person than two, going back and forth, because you get nothing done. Yes, Bella?